students my name is Neyati Sey and my topic for the presentation is uh, taxonomical aids okay this is the fourth section of the chapter living world so let's proceed towards our topic that is taxonomical aids taxonomical studies of various species of plants animals and other organisms are useful in agriculture forestry industry and in general in knowing our bioresources and their diversity these studies would require correct classification and identification of organism identification of organism they require intensive laboratory and field studies the collection of actual specimen of plant and animal species is essential and is the prime source of taxonomic studies. These are also fundamental to studies and essential for training in systematics. It is used for classification of an organism and information gathered is also stored along with the specimens. Okay. In some cases, the specimen is preserved for future studies. Biologists have uh, established certain procedures and techniques to store and preserve the information as well as the specimen. Some of these are explained to help you understand the usage of these aids. Okay. First is herbarium. Herbarium in botany, a herbarium sometimes known by anglicized term herbar, it is a collection of a uh, preserved plants uh, specimens these uh, specimens may be whole plant or plant parts these will usually be in a dried form mounted on a sheet but depending upon the material may also be kept in alcohol or other preservative the same term is often used in mycology to describe an equivalent co collection of preserved fungi otherwise known as a fugarium okay Now, how the specimens are preserved? To preserve their form and color, plants collected in the field are spread flat on the sheets of the new sprint and dried, usually in the plant press, okay, between blotters or absorbed papers. The specimen, which are then mounted on the sheets of a stiff white paper, are labeled with all essential data, such as date and place found. Description of the plant, altitude and special habitat conditions. The sheet is then placed in a protective case. As a precaution against insect attack, the pressed plant is frozen or poisoned and the case disinfected. Okay? Certain groups of plant are soft, bulky or otherwise not amenable to drying and mounting on sheets. For these plants, other methods of preparation and storage may be used. For example, conifer cones and the palm fronds may be stored in labeled boxes. Representative flowers or fruits may be pickled in formaldehyde to preserve their three-dimensional structure. A small specimens such as mosses and lichens are often air dried and packaged in a small paper envelopes. No matter the method of preservation detail information on where and when the plant was collected, habitat, color and the name of the collector is usually included. Okay, And then comes the collection management. Most herbaria utilize a standard system of organizing their specimen into herbarium cases. Specimen sheets are stacked in groups by the species to which they belong and placed in a large light weighted folder that is labeled on the bottom edge. Okay? Group of the specimen folders are then placed together into larger heavier folders by genus. The genus folders are then sorted by taxonomic family according to the standard system selected for use by the herbarium and placed into the prison holes in herbarium cabinets. Okay? And locating a specimen field in the herbarium requires knowing the nomenclature and 
classification used by the herbarium. It also requires familiarity with possible name changes that have occurred since the specimen was collected, since the specimen may be filed under an older name. Modern herbaria often maintain electronic database of their collection. Many herbaria have initiatives to digitize specimens to produce a virtual herbaria. These records and images are made publicly accessible via the internet when possible. Okay. Now comes the botanical garden. It is another taxonomical aid. Okay. A botanical garden is a controlled and a staffed institution for maintenance of living collection of plants under scientific management for the purpose of education and research. Together with such libraries, herbaria, laboratories and museums as are essential to its particular undertaking. Each botanical garden naturally develops its own special field of interest depending on its personal location, extent, available funds and the term of its charter. It may include greenhouse, test grounds, a herbarium and arboretum and other departments. It also maintains a scientific as well as a plant growing staff and publication is one of its major modes of expression. Okay? A contemporary botanical garden is a strictly protected natural urban green area where managing organization creates landscaped gardens and hold documented collection of living plants or preserved plant accessions containing functional unit of heredity of actual or potential value for purpose such as scientific research, education, public display, conservation, sustainable use, tourism and recreational activities and production of marketable plant-based products and the services for the improvement of the human well-being. Okay? Now, if we talk about the role and the function of a botanical garden then many of the functions of the botanical gardens have already been discussed in the section which em emphasize the scientific underpinning of a botanical garden with their focus on research education and conservation however as multifaceted uh, organization all sites have their own special interest okay in a remarkable paper on the role of botanical garden Ferdinand Müller the director of the Royal Botanical Garden Melbourne okay stated that in all cases the objects of a botanical garden must be mainly scientific and predominantly instructive he then detailed many of the objectives that were being pursued by the words botanical garden in the middle of the 19th century when European gardens were at their height many of these uh, are listed below to give a sense of a scope of botanical garden activities at that time and the ways in which they they differed from parks or what he called public pleasure gardens. Okay. Now, if we talk about the future of the botanical garden, then botanical gardens are still being built, such as first botanical garden in Oman, okay, which will be one of the largest garden in the world once it is completed and will house the first large scale cloud forest in a huge glass house. There has been a remarkable development of botanical garden in China over recent years, including Hainan Botanical Garden of Tropical Economical Plants. Okay. In recent times, the focus has been on creating an awareness of the threat to ecosystem from human overpopulation and its consequent need for biological and physical resources. Botanical gardens provide an excellent medium for communication between world of botanical science and general public. Okay, education program can help the uh, public develop greater environmental awareness by understanding the meaning and the importance of ideas like conservation and sustainability. Okay, now comes the museum. 
Biological museums, they are generally a set up in educational institutes such as school and colleges. They are the collection of plants and animal species preserved for study and references. In museums, specimens are preserved in containers and jars, contains preservatory chemical solutions such as formalin, which is a 40% formaldehyde solution. Insects are preserved in insect boxes, where as larger animals like bird and animals, they are usually stuffed and preserved. Okay? Museum also contains uh, skeleton and fossils of animals. Okay? comes a zoological park. Zoological parks are the places where animals are kept in a protective environment and looked after from other stress like predators etc. In zoological park, all animals are provided with an environment similar to their natural habitat. Okay? All animals in a zoo are provided as far as possible the conditions similar to their natural habitats. Children love visiting these parks commonly called as zoos. Okay? Now comes a taxonomic keys. A taxonomic key is a device used by the biologist for identifying unknown organism. Keys are constructed so that user is presented with a series of choices about the characteristic of the unknown organism by making the correct choice at each step of the key. The user is ultimately led to the identity of a specimen. Keys that are based on successive choices between only two statements are known as dichotomous keys and are type of the key preferred by most biologists. Okay? Such keys are constructed using contrasting characteristics to divide the organism in the key into smaller and smaller groups each time a choice is made. A number of organisms are eliminated. If sufficient characteristics are contrasted, the number of possibilities for identify of the unknown organism is eventually reduced to one. Okay? How to use a taxonomic key? Examining uh, first, just examining a uh, specimen carefully and noting its characteristics before beginning to key it out are good habits of to develop when trying to identify plants. Some are um, helpful hints for the successful use of the taxonomic key. First of all, read any introductory comment concerning the format of the key, abbreviations and so forth before using the key. And second, always read both choices present at each step of the key. Third, use a glossary to find the definition of any terms you do not understand. And fourth, use a ruler when me measurements are required. Do not just guess. Okay. Because living organisms are always somewhat variable, do not make a decision based on a single specimen. Instead, arrive at an average by examining several different specimens. Okay? Flora, manuals, monographs, catalogs are some other means of recording descriptions. They also help in correct identification. Flora contains the actual account of habitat and distribution of plants of a given area. These provide the index to the plant species found in a particular area. Manuals are useful in providing information for identification of names of a species found in area. Monographs also contain information on any one taxon. Now come to its advantages and disadvantages. Uh, if we talk about the advantages, then a large amount of the knowledge about reliable and efficient identification procedure may be incorporated in a good single access key. Characteristics that are reliable and convenient to observe most of the time and for most species and which further provide a well-balanced key okay, will be preferred at the start of the key. However, in practice, it is difficult to achieve this goal for all the taxa in all conditions. If the information for a given identification step is not available, several potential leads uh, must be followed and identification becomes increasingly difficult. Second, although 
software exists that helps in skipping questions in a single access key, the more general solution to this problem is the construction and the use of the multi-access key, allowing a free choice of identification steps and are easily adaptable to different taxa, as well as different circumstances of identification. So this comes to an end. Thank you and stay tuned.